Hello guys and welcome back. If you like chainsaws and restoration, then you've come to the right place because we are restoring this early 1960s McCulloch 152 chainsaw. It was built in the early 60s, it's 87cc, and if you haven't watched the first episode, if you click up here, you can watch it from the beginning. Because in the first one, we got all the horrible fuel and everything out, worked out what was going on with the saw, made sure it had spark, compression, and all of that, and we got it started, we got it running. So now it's time to take it apart, strip it down to its bare bones. Well, see how far and carried away I get of taking it apart. We'll see how we get on with that. We're gonna strip that down, we're gonna put it through our new parts washer and get it all clean and shiny, and then we're gonna see what we've got, see which bits we're gonna use, and we're gonna take it from there. We're Hayes Machinery, this is our YouTube channel, please consider subscribing, let's crack on. So just having a look over this saw before we start stripping it apart, and it looks as though like when these saws were originally made that they were fully assembled and then painted. So there's only a few little bits on the outside like the handles and the pull start and the decals and everything stuck onto it afterwards. But it looks like the carb was actually installed before it was painted. So that means the whole saw was put together before it was painted because you can see an uva spray here on the carburetor. And you even see it on the same on our donor saw. Well, the other saw that we've got. So you've got the Uber spray there, so you can actually see where they've sprayed it once it's been fully assembled. So I'm actually contemplating on how much we need to take off this saw before we do it. But anyway, we're gonna start stripping it down and work out what we've got. Let's bang on with that. Ah! Thought I'd done that already. The saw doesn't get any lighter. It doesn't get any lighter. That's gone black again. Do I get something in the tank which is making it do that? Clean as you go, keep it clean. We like to keep our work area clean with red rag. <laughs> what am I doing? Washing machines go better with cow gone. The reason I'm singing that is because there's loads of lime scale here. So that song popped into my head, obviously, as it does on the aluminium. There's loads of, it looks like cement, to be quite honest. Just growing on the aluminium. I'm guessing that's lime scale. Fun. Oh, hello. Oh, look at that. How shiny that once was. Well, that one's broken anyway. I'm not going to do that because they're two different covers. That hasn't got that groove in there. So to think, the last chainsaw restoration I done was a still MS500i, one of the most modern technical chainsaws on the market today. If you want to watch that video, it's up here, but that's a fuel injected chainsaw. This is like opposite ends of the market. This is as simple and as basic as they come. So we've got both ends of the scale. This is a rebuild on a very, very old machine. That was a rebuild on a very, very modern machine. Anyway, this is really simple. There's nothing much to it. So let's crack on. Bent fin here, broken fin on the cylinder. That's tight. Oh, very tight. God. God. As if it wasn't warm enough today already. No one needed any stuck bolts today. I hope I'd move that round first, but never mind. There we go. Got it. Big old brute of a coil. how to get that out without taking the keyway out. Perhaps I just banged it in a bit further and got it out. But the gasket on the inside of that cover is beautiful. It has really good condition. Right, we're gonna leave that there. There's still enough keyway there to be able to slide the flywheel back on and have plenty of traction. And we got the cover off, win-win. I don't think that keyway is gonna fall out while we're washing it. If it does, then I think it's earned it. But there we go, let's crack on with it. Made in the 
the USA. That carb is beautiful. It's just a thing of beauty, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous, I like it. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're nearly done. I'm tempted to hit it with a hammer. That's what I was tempted to do. That handle is weak. There's not much to it. The donor saw or the other saw, I think someone has at some point made up some sort of plate on the back of there. We'll have a look at that in a minute. That goes in there and then down. How cool is that? Reads this to me. Applies it is. Ha <laughs> Always away. So you can see that it was even painted. Yeah, that pipe was, it wasn't painted until that bit was on. And it was painted with the clutch on as well, by the looks of things. Because it wouldn't have been repainted at any time. No one would have gone to that hassle. Sitting that, that's what we're doing. That's some old sword or something, mate. That has been there a long, long time. That could be like 50 year old sword, 60 year old sword, maybe. It's hard to get out, it's going to be even harder to get back in again. Put a quarter inch fuel pipe on a chainsaw. That's what you put on lawnmowers, not chainsaws generally, but you know. There we are. My gasket's come off really easily. Nice. There she is. Beautiful. Running out of space here, Will. I don't even know how you'd get that out of there without taking that bit off. Hmm. Oh, I say that. That's beating me, that is. Got my t-shirt dirty now. How dare I? That does not want to come out. There's no getting away from that. Oh, yeah, I've gone and done it. How about that? It's probably a different hole, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, same one. Yeah, I've done it. I thought I've snapped it off, probably near my luck. Where are we, down here somewhere? Girls, sod you. <laughs> this would be cool. Watch James struggle. Oh. Arm pump. Why do manufacturers use flat-headed screwdriving screws, hey? Good old proper hex head nut. There we go, that's what you want. Something you put a spanner on, not a bloody screwdriver. Never mind, we'll get through it. Only like four more to go. Oh. Don't want to come out, Will. Got to get the front case off, cos that'll make it look pretty. Don't need to take the front case off, cos the petrol tank, we know the petrol tank doesn't leak, but it's coming off whether it wants to or not. So I've also got another one there and some spare screws, so it doesn't matter if I mangle the screws, cos I'm sure I'll find a couple out of that one. But then I might find some nice stainless steel stuff, which isn't flatheads. Although, being a restoration, it probably should be flatheads. Who knows? We'll work it out. How many times have I said that already today? Oh. These ones that have been near the ground, that's what the trouble is. Yes. <laughs> one to go. One to go. One to go. Good old cold chisel. Yeah. See? Okay. What was the fuss about that? Ready? Yeah, baby. It's quite a lot of screws just holding in one tank, isn't it? Oh, look at my pot. My oil pot isn't very oil proof, I just realised. Nice. <laughs> nice. Changed tune, well. What did I crack? It definitely changed oh, tune, didn't it? It did change tune, yeah. <laughs> I was like, mm, fuck. <laughs> there we go, just the gasket holding it. Look at that, the front part of the saw is off. Yeah, that's gross. Petrol tank, fuel tank, whatever, with 4,000 screws holding it in is now off. Unfortunately, it's five o'clock. It's, it's Will's home time. So we're going to have to come back tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye. Right, so we've got it down to a few hundred pieces. I'm quite pleased with how it's all come apart, although I had to get the old hammer and cold chisel out 
on a few of the bolts on the front of the petrol tank. I haven't taken everything apart on this yet. We're gonna give it a clean down, because at the end of the day, the cylinder and piston, everything is absolutely fine. The crankcase is all good. My biggest concern is if we do strip this down and take the front part off, there's actually another four gaskets in there. You've got one here from the inlet manifold, which comes down off the carb into the reed system. And you've got another one here on the fuel tank going back onto the crankcase in there. And then you've got another one here on the top of the cylinder. My biggest issue is I'm not gonna be able to get the genuine gaskets for that. And being that it's on a cylinder, making a gasket on a cylinder is never the easiest thing. Doing one on front of the petrol tank or fuel tank is quite easy, quite happy with that. And the same with the oil tank on the top. They're absolutely fine. If I've got to use gasket sealer, I've got to, but we should be able to make a gasket for that. It's all in a load of pieces. The now the thing is to do is to go up and clean them all off in our new parts washer. I say new, we've got it on demo from Safety Clean. Let's go and check that out and give these a scrub off. Let's go. So Safety Clean have sent us this spaceship. I know it looks like a spaceship, but it's not. It's a parts washer. It's got air in there and it's got a pressurized Dubrima what's it thingy. Anyway, let's put a part in there. Actually, hang on. I've already done that bit. There's a part in there from our McCulloch chainsaw. We are going to wash that off and see how it comes out. Let's have a go. Quite warm. Yeah. 60 degrees this heats up to. Was it 60 degrees? Well, it's currently 54.3 degrees. But if you've got cold hands in the winter, this would be amazing. Wow, look at that. That is coming up really well already. Ah, no. Ah! So you put your end down and you can grab your air hose and blow it all off. So before you even take it out of the cupboard, it's ready to rock and roll. Whereas we used to have to do this like out in the open. That is awesome. Look at that. Well, I found a crack in it anyway. So. That nearly takes the paint off as well. That was amazing. Right, let's get it out. Whew. Oh, he's filming. There we go. Look at that. Really clean. Absolutely beautiful. Apart from we have found out that we've got a puncture. We've got a crack in our casing, but luckily we've got a spare, so that's all right. Let's compare it against the other one. Yes, yeah, so this one's in much better condition, apart from it has got a crack up there, but we can make that work, it's okay. And that one's got the chain tensioner in the side of the um, clutch cover, so that's all good. Right, let's crack on some more cleaning, because we've got the full unit to put in there now. Quite excited. It's quite a cool machine, this. <laughs> I think we can all agree that machine is pretty awesome. It heats the fluid up to about 60 degrees and blows it out at a fair rate. It has cleaned all of these parts up amazingly well. So well that I think I'm comfortable that we're not going to have to take all of the crankcase and everything apart. For one, we know it works. We've seen it work. That should be absolutely fine. Two, I'm not gonna be able to get the gaskets for it. And three, I think with a clever bit of taping, we can paint it perfectly as it is. So I think the risk factor against that not working when we put it back together against how good it is now, we're just gonna leave it and restore it as is. In the next episode, which will be episode three, we will be doing all the rest restoration bits. We're gonna be getting the chainsaw bar back to how it should be. Rather than it being rusty brown, it's gonna be shiny silver. And then we have got the carburetor to go through. We have got all of the paint work to get off. We've got to get all the yellow paint off, so a bit of paint stripper and whatever we're gonna to use to get rid of that. Although the new washer thing up there has got rid of a lot of the flaky stuff already, which is good. The only thing with that is that it's left along a lot of rough edges, which is pretty much just lime scale and stuff on the aluminium. So we're gonna get that back smooth again as well. And then, we're going to have to paint it and get it all back looking nice and shiny. So we are going to do that in episode three of this little mini series of restoring this McCulloch 152. But we're Haze Machinery. This is our YouTube channel. Please consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next one.